JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for December the 3rd. I am Harlambos Pissuros, Head of Research here at JFD and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's uh, read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds uh, to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar traded higher against most of the other major currencies on Thursday and during the Asian session Friday. It lost some ground only versus the pound and the Swiss franc, while it gained the most versus Aussie, Kiwi and the Euro. Now, the strengthening of the US dollar and the weakening of the risk-linked Aussie and Kiwi suggests that markets traded in a risk-off fashion yesterday and today in Asia. However, the weakening of the yen and the strengthening of the pound points otherwise. Thus, in order to get a clearer picture with regards to the broader market sentiment, we prefer to turn our gaze to the equity world. There are major EU indices traded in the red, but uh, later in the day, Wall Street rebounded with the recovering sentiment rolling somewhat into the Asian session today. Now, European indices may have continued to be dragged down by the uncertainty surrounding the Omicron COVID variant and the potential implications uh, new restrictive measures could have on the global economy. With no clear and strong catalyst uh, to justify the rebound uh, later in the day, we will class this one as a corrective bounce as well. Remember yesterday we said that the uncertainty surrounding the coronavirus uh, by itself may be enough to prevent market participants from adding to their, uh, from adding to their risk exposures. Today the spotlight is likely to turn to economic, uh, to turn to economic data for a while. The main release may be the US employment report for uh, November. Non-farm payrolls are expected to have accelerated to 550,000 from 531,000 uh, the prior month, while the unemployment rate is anticipated to have ticked down to 4.5% from 4.6%. Um, from, uh, Average hourly earnings are forecast to have grown at the same monthly pace as in October, something that will take the year-over-year -year rate up to 5% from 4.9%. Uh, now, accelerating, accelerating wages could, tr could translate uh, into accelerating inflation in the months to come, and thus this, combined with decent employment gains and a sliding unemployment rate, could add more credence to Fed Chair Powell's view that the transitory wording may have to be dropped out of the Fed's uh, monetary policy statement and that tapering should end sooner than previously thought. This could encourage more dollar buying but how equity markets will react is not uh, crystal clear. On the one hand, more investors may reduce their risk on expectations that uh, higher rates sooner could hurt companies' profitability, while on the other, they could, uh, they could uh, be bought as a strong, uh, as a strong uh, report could underscore the, uh, the, strong, uh, the strong performance of, uh, of the U.S. economy. Even if the second proves to be true, though, uh, as investors may have digested somewhat the idea of higher rates sooner, we will not call for a long-lasting recovery. We will treat it as an extension of the latest corrective bounce. We stick to our guns that the uncertainty surrounding the Omicron variant may result in another round of uh, selling soon. Now, as for the rest of today's events, at the same time with the U.S. employment report, we get uh, jobs data for November from Canada as well. The unemployment rate is forecast to have slid to 6.6% from 6.7%, uh, while the net change in employment is forecast to show that the economy has added 35,000 jobs after adding 31.2 thousand in October. Following the stronger than expected rebound in economic activity during the third quarter, and decent, and decent jobs report could increase speculation for a rate hike by the Bank of Canada soon, and thereby support somewhat the loony. 
Remember that at, its, at their latest gathering, Canadian policymakers unexpectedly ended their quantitative easing program, maintaining an optimistic stance. Having said all that, though, it remains to be seen whether the Omicron variant will be a reason for changing plans. With that in mind, and taking into account that the Looney is a risk linked currency, we will treat any rebound as a corrective bounce and we would expect it to come back under selling interest in case the broader sentiment deteriorates again. As uh, for the rest of the releases, we get uh, the final services and composite uh, market PMIs for November from the Eurozone, the UK and the US. And as with the manufacturing prints, they are mostly expected to confirm their preliminary estimates. The ISM non-manufacturing PMI for November is also coming out and the forecast points to a decline to 65 from 66.7. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 8 o'clock a.m. GMT. You can find the link in the description below. So, goodbye, have a great day, a greater weekend, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again uh, next week. JFT, just fair and direct.